Treasure blessings be stored in life, come and dwell with us. Cleanse us of all the defiles of us, and our and save our souls. Lord, you are in us, and your peace of you, and your peace of you. Lord, you open the wisdom of Blessed be the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever.
and our whole life through Christ our God. <laughs>
heaven. Peace be with all wisdom, let us be attentive. May the Lord be the strength to his I have been informed, my brethren, by certain members of Quill's household that you are quarreling among yourselves. This is what I mean. One of you will say, I belong to Paul. Another, I belong to Apollos. Still another, Cephas, has my alliance. And the fourth, I belong to Christ. Has Christ then been divided into parts? Was it Paul who was crucified for you? Was it in Paul's name that you were baptized? Thank God I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius. So there are none who can say that you were baptized in my name. Oh, and I baptized the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I am not aware of having baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize but to preach the gospel, not with wordy wisdom, however, lest the cross of Christ be rendered void of its meaning. Peace be with God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Gave thanks and passed them around to those reclining there. 
He did the same with the dried fish, as much as he wanted. When they had enough, he told his disciples, Gather up the crusts that are left over, so that nothing will go to waste. At this, they gathered twelve baskets full of pieces, left over by those who had been fed with the five barley loaves. When the people saw the sign he had performed, they began to say, This is undoubtedly the prophet who is to come into the world. because I see this whole rack of cameras in front of me here like I'm giving some sort of a speech at the United Nations and of course we're blessed by the illustrious presence of our sister provincial today so I'm just, I hope I don't get tongue-tied here. <laughs> now you should have noticed those of you that uh, are paying attention to the Divine Liturgy that <clears throat> something is not quite correct something that has happened up until this point. Does anybody know what it is? The singing is perfect, by the way. Well, I didn't take the prescribed reading for today, which is from Matthew, and I instead chose to uh, read uh, uh, the, the Gospel account of the same event, the multiplication of the loaves, that we find in St. John. And there's a specific reason for that, because in St. John, uh, it uh, is the only gospel that, uh, that, that, that tells about this multiplication of loaves that mentions one small fact that is missing in the other gospel accounts of the multiplication of loaves. And that is the presence of one person. Who is that person? There is a small boy here who has five loaves and a couple of dried fish. So he's the, he's only mentioned in the Gospel of John. This small boy that had five uh, lo barley loaves, you know, the other Gospels just say, you know, loaves of bread. But this was barley loaves and two dried fish. The other Gospel accounts don't mention him of the multiplication of the loaves. And sometimes I kind of wonder about that, you know, uh, where did he come from? There were 5,000 men there, not to, uh, you know, not counting perhaps the women and children. So it was a huge crowd, perhaps the largest crowd that uh, Jesus had spoken to up to that point. So where did, out of all those thousands of people, all of a sudden this small boy comes, in front, to the front and center, carrying these five loaves and two fish. Where did he come from? Why was he carrying so much, so many loaves? You know, there's certainly too much for him. Maybe his parents were standing someplace nearby, you know, and overheard the conversation between Jesus and the, and the disciples saying, you know, where are we going to get all this, all, all this food to feed the, these people? And so they, maybe they said, maybe they had these five loaves and they said to their son, the little boy, go and take this up to them. You know, maybe it'll help. We have five loaves here. It's too, many, too much for us. We don't know what his name is. We don't know where he came from. Just in the whole history of salvation, he's there for that one minute. He comes out of that huge crowd. He brings forth his gift. And then he recedes back into anonymity. And we don't hear anything more about him after that. He has his, you know what they say, the 15 minutes of fame that everybody enjoys in their lifetime. Well, he had maybe 15 seconds. He enjoyed his 15 seconds of, of fame and then he went back. You know, And that should get, give us thinking a little bit. You know, a lot of you sisters... Uh, were teachers, catechists, nurses, worked in administration uh, over the course of many years. Now most of you are, are, are retired. And uh, 
how often, you know, does some people come up to us or write us a card or telephone us, or maybe here at the Vidpus they come up to us, people that we haven't seen for years and that we don't even remember. And they say, Sister, uh, you had me in grade one or grade three, or, you know, I was in a hospital someplace and you took care of me. And there was one small thing that you said to me, you know, uh, 45 years ago, that really helped me. And I always remember that one small thing. And then you look at those persons, those people, and you scratch your head because you don't even remember who they are. And, but they remember exactly the time and place and what you said. So, and then they, they go off. I'm sure each of us have had that experience. I, of course, have not as yet because I'm not that old. <laughs> but no, I've, I've, I've had that experience too. People that come up to me that I don't remember who they are from Adam. But they said I did or I said such and such a thing. I said, I hope it wasn't bad. And he says, no, it was good. So, this teaches us that just like the small boy with his five barley loaves that came into the life of, uh, uh, you know, into the history of salvation for 15 seconds and then went back, he brought his gift, his little gift. Just like we do, we're unaware that every day that we bring forth our little gifts. And sometimes we don't know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, what we do or say if it has some sort of a beneficial effect. If it has, you know, we plant a seed, but we don't know if anything grows or, or who, uh, you know, who harvests it. But this just goes to show that any little gift that we bring from ourselves, no matter how insignificant, even if we don't remember it, that it can bring forth fruit uh, for the kingdom. So that's one thing that we should always remember, especially when we hear this reading of, uh, from St. John. Now we never, as I said, we don't hear it uh, during the Sunday uh, uh, liturgies, but it is prescribed for uh, the Wednesday of the fifth week after Easter. So uh, one of those weeks during Easter tide, when we read the Gospel of John, on a Wednesday, you'll hear it again. And then remember that little boy, and remember that no matter how tiny or insignificant our gifts are, that we think they are, they can produce a lot of fruit. Slava Jesus Christ. Let us all say with our whole soul and our whole mind, let us say. Call upon you always and everywhere without condemnation and without stumbling.
testimony, in the pure testimony of our conscience, so that hearing us, you may be propitious to us in the abundance of your goodness. Once again, and many times, we fall before you and ask you, O good and loving Lord, that having looked upon our petition, you might cleanse our souls and bodies of every defilement of flesh and spirit, and might permit us to stand guiltless and unto them before your holy altar. Grant also, O God, to those praying with us, growth in life and faith and in spiritual understanding. And grant that they who serve you with fear and love may always partake of your holy mysteries without blame and condemnation, and may be worthy of your heavenly kingdom. He 
suffered now and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us stand, well, let us stand with fear. Let us be attentive to offer in peace the holy oblation.
Holy Spirit, fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, not for judgment or condemnation. Further, we offer you this rational worship for those who have gone to the rest of the faith, forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, and ascetics, and for every righteous soul that finishes life in faith. As also blivos apresedu prečesu preglasovendu, slavnu vladečutu našu bohorodicu, i presudimo Mariju. Let us commend ourselves and one another, and 
Save your people, O God, and bless your inheritance. We have seen the true light. We have received the Holy Spirit. We have found the true faith. We worship the undivided Trinity for having saved us. Blessed be our God. Always, now, and forever, and ever. Give them the courage to be the prophets of our 
hard times. Give them the wisdom and openness to live their personal call. Give them the strength to be ready witnesses of your love and care for the world. May they find support and encouragement in our words and our prayers through the intercession of Mary, the Mother of God, and all the saints. Amen. Blessed Yosef, all.